on this episode of This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. I want to show these guys what I do on a day-to-day -day basis and I think they're going to teach me a thing or two about golf. We're off to Windsor, Ontario, where no one goes home thirsty. Cheers. Cheers. And community is a way of life. We're going to be able to donate $100,000 to a local charity. That makes an absolutely uh, amazing event. The action kicks off at the inaugural Windsor Championship as a slew of worthy contenders take the stage. All this and more next. is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Nestled along the southern shore of the Detroit River sits Windsor, Ontario. Known as the automotive capital of Canada, the country's southernmost city boasts a diverse culture and storied history. And this year, it added to that history when the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada returned to action with the first ever Windsor Championship at Ambassador Golf Club. The community has actually been really good. The last couple weeks, everyone who's been coming through the golf course has been talking about it. Um, we've been getting tons of calls about volunteering, about tickets, about the Pro-Am, about the Junior Pro-Am. We're excited about the community involvement. We're going to have, we have a really cool vision of what this tournament could be, just kind of on a hosting perspective. But then you add the fact that we're going to be able to donate $100,000 to a local charity. That makes an absolutely uh, amazing event. The Ambassador Golf Club was designed by renowned golf course architect Thomas McBroom. Nominated as one of the best new courses in Canada after opening in 2005, this Par 71 public golf course has been acknowledged by leading golf writers from across the country, and it did not disappoint. As the inaugural Windsor Championship teed off at the Ambassador Golf Club, 156 players stepped out looking to be the first to take home the title. But at day's end, two players set themselves above the rest. The United States' Theo Humphrey and Canada's own Taylor Pendrith both posted record-setting bogey-free 62s. Richmond Hill, Ontario native Taylor Pendrith had a steady round going that gained momentum at the turn. He closed with seven birdies in his final nine holes and was the first to post the nine under par course record. Meanwhile, 22-year-old Theo Humphrey dropped in a birdie and an eagle in his first three holes and held strong down the stretch, adding six more birdies to his card. Behind the two leaders was Raleigh, North Carolina's Carter Jenkins. The 22-year-old carded eight birdies and trailed the leaders by one after his first round 63. Closing out the first round of competition, the crowded leaderboard included a two-way tie for third and a seven-way tie for fifth. Just 10 miles south of Ambassador Golf Club in Windsor, Ontario, some of the Mackenzie Tour pros traveled down the river to the south side of town, where the Detroit skyline can be seen from Canada's third largest distillery. This hidden gem on the river's edge is home to the oldest continuously produced Canadian whiskey. Founded by J.P. Weiser in 1857, its rich flavors and perfect blends are enjoyed around the world. But before this Canadian whiskey is ready for market, there's a long brewing process that just can't be rushed. Welcome to the JP Weiser's uh, Brand Experience Center. I'm Dr. Don Livermore. I'm the master blender for the uh, Hiram Walker Distillery. I want to show you the day on how Canadian whiskey is made. And I think by the end of the day, we'll get to try and make our own whiskey. Uh, you guys up for that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is the uh, distillery. What you see in front of here is uh, the fermentation vessels. If you were here on an any given day, this room would be probably 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Our grain is shipped 500 yards underground all the way up to the floor above us. Up there, there's a mill. Dries it into a finest powder as possible, which we dump into a tank. We add water to, to the process. So a lot of our water comes from the Great Lakes watershed because being here in Windsor, Ontario, we also will add malt or enzyme in, into the tank as well. We add something called sour mash into a tank. So we mix all those ingredients together. After learning the brewing process, the players headed off to become master brewers of their own. Coming up after the break, 
the boys get into the spirit mixing up their own personal blends at J.P. Weiser's. Mmm, got her. And then we get up close and personal with 2018 champion T.T. Crouch. I've won on some mini tours and won the high open, um, but nothing on this type of scale. And later, it's second round action from the Windsor Championship when this is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada returns. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Back at the J.P. Weiser Distillery, it's time the players try to concoct their own signature whiskey blends. Okay, you guys uh, ready to we'll learn a little bit more about whiskey? Yep. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go into our uh, brand center here, our education room, uh, and we can look at different styles of whiskey that I get to play with on a day-to-day -day basis, and maybe we can get you to blend your own whiskey. You up for that? Sweet. Blending is beautiful. I want to show these guys what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, and I think they're going to teach me a thing or two about golf as well. We got the same expensive taste. Okay. So. Weiser's has been a lot of fun. It's amazing to me how much goes on to just the production of whiskey and all the different types of whiskey. The stronger it is, the more hair it puts on your chest, right? I like that. Got it. I feel like a mad scientist out here. I went on the strong side. I thought uh, I thought mine was pretty good, but um, I don't know. I guess uh, we have some weak stomachs on the other side of things. No, 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 no. I thought everybody did a great job. Yeah, his his, his is different. And from uh, all the guys, I uh, want to thank you, Don, for giving us a great tour today and uh, letting us enjoy the the great spot of Weisers. Okay. Uh, cheers. Yeah, you know how we say cheers in Canada? How's that? Cheers a. <laughs> cheers a. Cheers a. T.T. Crouch's win at the inaugural Lethbridge Paradise Canyon Open catapulted the 26-year-old into the fifth spot on the order of merit. Considering he was the last man in the field based on his web.com tour status, that's a pretty good place to be. Although the season is still young, a win can change the trajectory of a career. And we checked in with the Florida Southern College grad to see how he's processing the victory in this week's On the Bag. Let's talk about that win last week. Yeah, uh, I finally got a chance to set in. You know, it was a lot of fun in the meantime, but uh, stressful, so it's good to have a week off afterwards. Uh, my family threw a surprise party for me when I got home, and uh, it was pretty emotional then. So life's been pretty good after a win. It opened up a lot of doors. Uh, got, it gave me a place to play. This is my biggest win to date besides winning back-to-back uh, -back NCAA national championships individually. Uh, I've won on some mini tours, I've won the Ohio Open, um, but nothing on this type of scale. You have to start somewhere, and uh, this is my path, and winning for the first time out here gave me a lot of confidence, knowing that I can play and belong out here. I got a little hometown connection. Tell me about that guy on your left there. Yeah, I grew up with Anthony, watching him play golf, trying to be like him. Someone that I've always looked up to. Three or four. Let's cover the water. I'm lucky to have him on the bag for the, for the summer, and hopefully he can stay on the bag. He gives me a sense of, you know, feeling more comfortable, and every week we're more prepared. He knows my game, and he knows what I can and can't do. We should right, we should right over this. Okay. Tell me about the family business back home and how, how that started and how that got you into golf. We moved on the golf course when I was in fifth grade. So I grew up, you know, cutting greens and uh, weed whacking and, you know, changing holes, mowing fairways, working with my dad and um, helping out when I can. Get over, get over. So I grew up loving it and, and actually knowing what it takes to have a good golf course and what it takes to, for it to be in good shape and how much effort it's put into it. So uh, I have a lot of respect for the superintendents and the guys that work in the pro shop because they put a lot of hours in and it's a lot of work. Quick fire questions for you, okay? okay. Favorite meal? Macaroni, cheese, and hot dogs. <laughs> Favorite post-game beverage? Coke. Favorite candy? Sour Patch Kids. And favorite sports team and why? The Cavaliers, LeBron James. Even now? Even now. What would be the perfect feature for TT Crouch? Play on the PGA Tour. 
and uh, raise a family. Perfect. Thank you. Have a good round, man. Take Thank care. You. T.T. Crouch couldn't reignite the spark he'd found in Lethbridge, and a 1 over 72 in round two would send him home early from the Winter Championship. Bellflower, California's Mark Anguiano fared much better at Ambassador Golf Club, following up his opening 63 with a second round 66. It was a good day today. I hit it really well off the tee, especially, and I needed to today. It was tricky, especially with the wind change coming from the north. A lot of those pins are pretty tucked. It was tough to get close. Yeah, so I did well and made a few long putts. Early in the season, Anguiano got starts based on his web.com tour status. But thanks to a top 23 and a recent T6 during the BC golf swing, the 25-year-old sits comfortably within the top 25 on the order of merit. I like the courses up here. I think they fit my game pretty well. Most of the time, you got to drive it pretty straight out here, and you don't really see yourself short-sided too often. And because of that, you can make a lot of birdies, and you can also save a lot of pars if you're dialed in with the short game. So I'm pretty comfortable out here because of that. Coming off an opening course record 62, Taylor Pendrith was unable to replicate his round one form. It was pretty difficult out there, I thought. I stayed patient all day. I didn't really have too many great looks at birdies, but I birdied the par fives and then made a couple on the back nine, which I feel is the harder nine. It turned out to be a good day. It was a grind, but uh, got in at three under, so yeah, I'm pretty pleased. But the 27-year-old from Richmond Hill, Ontario, paired five birdies against just two bogeys for a three under 68 good enough to get into the final pairing for the first time this season. I'm just happy to be out here and on, on the first page of the leaderboard. I'm just gonna keep plugging away and, and see where I you know, stack up at the end. Pendrith's first round co-leader, Theo Humphrey, posted a solid two under 69 to stay in the mix at 11 under par. And with a pair of matching 64s, the United States' Ian Davis and Jake Scott both jumped into a tie for second alongside Taylor Pendrith. Up next, it's moving day at the Windsor Championship. But first... I've now figured out what works for me and I feel very confident with what I've been doing. We sit down with Order of Merit leader Zach Wright when this is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada returns. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Now on the tee from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Zach Wright. Zach Wright, the man of the hour, is swooping in this season on the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. And he's already climbed the ranks to claim the number one spot on the order of merit. I've now figured out what works for me and where I need to be and what I'm doing. And I feel very confident with what I've been doing. So it's been showing these last four weeks for sure. The 24-year-old from Phoenix, Arizona has certainly let his confidence carry him through. And not having missed a single cut all year, with consecutive top tens in every event so far, Wright can sense a victory is on the horizon. You know, I've been close, I haven't gotten it done, but if I continue putting myself in position, it's gonna happen eventually. A complete turnaround from last year, he's keeping the pedal down staying within the top five in both scoring and birdie averages. Last year, I didn't have the greatest year. You get out there and you're not having fun and it's a bit of a grind and I'm just trying to figure out what works. And I think I've, I've come a long way with trying to figure that out and I've gotten a lot closer to where I need to be. And although he's cozy at the top now, he's laser focused and ready to put in the work to reach his goals and keep the momentum going through season's end. Coming up here, my goal was definitely like the top 10. And then since what I've done, I want to be the, the number one guy. You got to go out there and be aggressive and do what needs to be done. Moving day was in full effect at the inaugural Windsor Championship, as plenty of players made moves up the leaderboard early in round three, including Order of Merit leader Zach Wright, who jumped 37 spots after a nine under 62. I got up to a really quick start and I just kind of kept it rolling. Yeah, yeah. I made a bunch of butts, hit it close. I mean, it's just kind of, it was easy golf today. Wright's fourth round of 62 this season had him just three back entering the final round. Today was back to what, how I've been playing and it was 
a lot easier. Another, another opportunity, so that's all I really wanted. We'll see what happens. Theo Humphrey also got off to a strong start. Going four under on his first three holes. But consecutive bogeys on 15 and 16 left him tied for six with Wright at 15 under. One stroke ahead are Zach Fushi and Joseph Harrison. Each posted their third straight round in the 60s. While Canadian Michael Gligic needed just 29 putts to cap off a 64 to move into solo third. But for all the movement on the leaderboard, the day ended as it began, with the final pairing of Mark Anguiano and Taylor Pendrith atop the leaderboard. Me and Mark had a good battle. Uh, we were kind of going back and forth. My putter bailed me out and uh, made some birdies. It was a good day overall. I got off to a really good start. Um, and I kind of just played pretty steady throughout the rest of the round, hung in there pretty well and finished uh, with a good birdie on 17. The dynamic duo would finish the third round tied at 18 under, setting up a showdown of contrasting styles with Anguiano's precision versus Pendrith's power. We have the complete opposite games, but we have like the exact same mentality, so it's nice to have someone like that you're playing with. It's exciting, you know, anytime you have a chance to win on Sundays is a good thing, and I'm just gonna do my thing and, and just play golf and see where I stack up at the end. It'd be great to get a Canadian winner this year. Yeah! I feel like I'm gonna be the, the bad guy, but that's good, I like that, I think it's fun. I, the crowds today were very, very nice to me, so hopefully they'll like that tomorrow. After the break, on this is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. It's like winning the lottery for us, especially when you have to raise as much money in a year as we do. This is fantastic. We're playing with a purpose at the Windsor Championship. And then it's a final round showdown for the title after the break. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Since 1979, the Hospice of Windsor and Essex County has been supporting patients and families who are dealing with life-threatening illnesses. Their circle of care includes daily house calls for homebound patients, a children's home for kids with ill parents or siblings, and an eight-bed residential facility for patients in the late stages of their illnesses. Families can come 24-7, and it's just a wonderful, warm family environment and uh, basically it's they can do whatever they want there it's their home for the time that they're there we have a team of physicians team of nurses social workers spiritual care workers and a virtual army of volunteers for nearly 40 years they've been a role model for community-based organizations in canada people have embraced the hospice concept right from the very beginning. And our community has supported us all through the years. Our budget now, half of it is supported through government, the rest we raise in the community. So that's about a million dollars every year. We are very fortunate to live here in Essex County where people really, they love their hospice. We couldn't ask for any more than that. And this year will be a first. They're the primary beneficiary of the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada's Windsor Championship. I didn't realize that they supported a charity through this and then they would raise a minimum of 100,000 for us. That's like winning the lottery for us, especially when you have to raise as much money in a year as we do. This is fantastic. The final round of the Windsor Championship began with Mark Anguiano and Taylor Pendrith tied atop the leaderboard. But the Ambassador Golf Club provided opportunities for other players to make a Sunday charge. It's awesome, it's a great layout. You gotta really dial in your shots coming in these greens. And once you get on the greens, you can make some putts out here. And Theo Humphrey took full advantage. He went six under on his first seven holes to tie for the lead but bogeys on three of his final five holes leave him in a tie for sixth. Zach Wright gained momentum on his inward nine, but it was too little too late, and the order of merit leader had to settle for his fifth consecutive top 10 finish to begin the season. For most of the day, Canada's Michael Gligic and Taylor Pendrith were battling it out with American Anguiano. They made it hard, so 
it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I was very at ease, didn't have many expectations, didn't put a lot of pressure on myself throughout the whole week, even today. I felt good out there all week. While the three players took turns atop the leaderboard, it was Anguiano who took control down the stretch. Great day, it was tough out there all day. When I bogeyed 14, I knew I had a man up. Birdie 15, made a clutch par save on 16, and made a clutch putt for birdie on 17. And after I hit it on the green on 18, I had a good feeling that I was gonna pull it off. It's a great feeling. Anguiano's final round 65 gave him a two-shot victory for his first McKenzie Tour title, vaulting him into fourth on the order of merit. After Toronto in a couple weeks, the top three on the money list get into the RBC Canadian Open. This is huge, I'm right where I wanna be, so it's good. After another top 10, Zach Wright maintains his lead in the standings, followed by George Cunningham, Sam Fidone, Mark Anguiano, and Jordan Niebrugge in the top five as the tour heads to Thunder Bay following a great inaugural event in Windsor. The success of this event has just been um, overwhelming. As a uh, lead volunteer in this tremendous event, I'm thrilled. The amount of money we raised was double what we wanted. It's just been phenomenal. And the weather today, uh, you know, what a fitting uh, end to a great tournament. On the next episode, it's off to Thunder Bay, Ontario for the Stahl Foundation Open presented by TBaytel, where last year, Johnny Ruiz took that first step on the path to the web.com tour. And we pick up the action on and off the links. Check out all that and more next time on This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada.